I'm gonna say normally shows us that Lenovo. I was just wondering if that conked out or not. Yeah, it's just I'm I'm going through the HDMI display capture, so you're not gonna see my GDM yeah. login. I'm logging in now. Hey, all right. <sighs> okay, you take it from here. Okay, Where you have to. All right. So everyone who saw the installation, pretend none of that never happened. Which it was fine. It was fine. I hate it. I hate it so much. Yeah, it's especially when when GitHub times out, the entire thing is useless, and then it's, people are like, "Cloud it's, sucks." It's, no, no, it's it is what it is. Um, it's fine. We just try over and over and over again. So, what is this tool called? What what does this do for me? I don't know. You you tell me. Uh, so well, this you is, wrote it. I, <laughs> That's I, I, was, I was being, I was being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> this, so this is called Yafty. Um, Yafty is another first-time installer tool. So yep. um, if for those who are trying to make their own Ublue, Universal Blue flavors, you can customize the screens, the sequences for those, the packages oh, you install. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Open a terminal, rebase to DX, and while that's happening, then go into this. Oh, oh I'll rebase DX, and then I'll have the... Oh, you know, it's going to yeah, already yeah. put the Yafty touch in there, though. Dang. Um, stop. Well, we'll just delete it, and then yeah, you, you know the, how to delete, delete it, though. Yeah, yeah. One, yeah. So I'm going to close this for now. We'll do the Yafty after we do the DX. Oh, I already rebased the DX. I'm in DX. Oh. Okay, let's start. How do we tell what image we're on? There we go. Let's Oof start with the. Uh, we right. just rebased it. Yeah, you have your own. Yeah. This is your background. Oh, I but, well, you yeah, that. but I want to show people how you can see what image you're on because this is important. Uh, okay, I ran RPM OS tree status. I'm assuming that's the one you were going for, right? Yeah, yeah. Can you move? Can you move your windows? I can't see. What? Oh, you. What am I supposed to be watching? Yeah, one second, because I. I can't read the screen, and then I have to watch the stream, and it's all delayed. Yeah, yeah, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. There you go. You see it? Okay. Now? Yeah. So remember how I said before, if you hold on one second, let me fix it for you because you're having a hard time. Yeah. Uh... Is that better? Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Um, all right. So see that dot? That is the thing that you're booted into. Yeah. So the OS3 unverified, right? That's like a normal Docker address, right? And then if you go to see Fedora colon Fedora slash 38 slash that, that is an OS tree native thing. So that is the last snapshot that you booted into. Got it. So if, if you do RPM OS3 rebase, you would go back to that. And it's just a reboot, which you is like revert. Really nice. No, 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 no. Let's not do. I'm not saying it, but you said rebase. You mean actually reverts. No, it's. Uh, yeah, revert, but it's not. It's not RP. It's an OS tree command. It's like oh, OS tree okay. admin revert or something. I don't. I don't remember. I don't really revert. I always move forward. Okay. I don't know. Okay. That's in the documentation. But anyway, Perfect. Okay, now you can go to Yafty. Okay. Okay. So I got to start Yafty yeah. up again. Um... Sorry, if there was going to be a long rebase, I was like, uh oh, we better get that out of the way. No, we did that. We went straight to DX from there. So. Was yep. it dot config? Yafty last run. All right, and I'll just run Yafty again. Okay, so Yafty, get this out of the way. Yep. First time. And then we might, we might want to go to the end to get that flat packs installing, and then. Yeah, yeah, I'm going now. Yeah, yeah. All right. So this one says, "Welcome traveler." This will modify your flat packs if you are rebasing. If you do not want to do this, exit the installer. So. This is yeah. this step. Can you tell me what this step is doing while I go through the rest? Of yeah, the we're game? getting rid of all the Firefox flat packs. We're we're getting rid of all that, and we're only doing flat hub only. That's what we do here. Um, right. and then I, I install the apps actually in user instead of system because yeah. that's how OpenSUSE does it, and I thought that was pretty dope. So we do that. Um, I I would skip. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is your PC, so yeah, actually. Yeah, I'm gonna set up my PC. <laughs> yeah. So here, this package list screen. Yeah, this yeah. is one of those things that's customizable. You can create as many groups as you want. You can create sub packages in those groups. Uh, so here, core is gonna be backup, black box terminal, calculator, calendar, characters, blah yeah. blah 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 blah. All these stuff. Uh, all this stuff is gonna get here by default, which is fine. Yeah. I'm not gonna mess with the core. I use Chrome for a lot of my stuff, so I'm gonna put Chrome on here. I don't need Edge or Opera. Uh, gaming. I'm probably gonna put Discord. Eh, I'll skip Steam, Steam for, for your 2D games if you want. Well, you have your Steam Deck. So. I have my Steam Deck, and I've got an yeah. actual gaming PC as well, so I'll do that. 
And then for Office, I don't care about any of these things. You might care about Slack. Mm, yeah, I'll put Slack on there. You're right. Uh, and then for streaming, probably won't be doing it on this side, so I'll leave it for now. Yeah, you can always just run normal Flatpak install commands. It's just like your first time setup. I'll yep. hit install. So this is going to take a few minutes. Um, it's going to go and install all those packages. Uh, yeah. You can watch the console output here. Uh, Pay attention to the dock, too. The dock. Oh, down yeah, here. Yeah, the dock at the bottom of the up. screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, so we'll give it a few seconds to run, and then... Um, yeah. That's it. I'll have DX. First thing I'm going to do is try yes. to get DBS code to work in boxes and stuff. Dev boxes. I need, yeah, I need that's my DS code. Do. And then I'm uh, probably going to patch a bug for Yafti because... So uh, hit, the, hit your Windows button and type VS Code. Hey. It's already there. Yeah. But you already preceded it. Yeah. I forgot. So I, That's right. Yeah. Because like... So we're like... Remember at first I was like, we are going to ship the world's first awesome flat pack container dev workflow thing. Mm -hmm. And I just got sick of all of it. So, uh, and the flat pack for VS Code is not very well maintained. So I was like, you know what? Oh, that's I can always change it later. That. So I include it on the image. I include Lexi and LexD on the image. Actually, once you get your browser, we could, I'd show you exactly. This is only on the DX image. Um, because what I wanted is for computers, like I have a two-in-one that's my media consumption device. Yeah. And like a laptop, I would give a friend or whatever. You should sit the Bluefin image. Oh. And Bluefin DX has like all the crap on it. Uh, so I layer Vert Manager, Kimu, all that, because all that stuff is just better layered. And, you know, so I just made a DX image with all that stuff in it. Uh, and then we carefully pick and choose what to add. Uh, and then the, the mantra there is mostly for packages and stuff. Uh, you'll either do it through Homebrew, Nix, or uh, DevPod with dev containers. Uh, so the image is kind of, if you had to be a developer and you had to have stuff that was layered, it would be that. The only bummer about the layering thing is if you don't use VS Code, it's oh, so much better. annoying. I'm sorry. Everyone that does natural scrolling with touchpads, I respect you, but it's not for me. <laughs> Absolutely not for me. Uh, okay. I don't think I need anything else. That should be pretty yeah, much Why are you using your trackpad on a thing? Well... No judgment. Well, you judgment. mean use the the magic yeah. uh, the nipple? Yeah, actually, show show some some of the output there on the screen if you can read off what you see in there. Yes, yeah, so it's just installing all the flat pack runtime. So it sees here that there was an, an error installing yeah. some platform package, but seems to still progressed okay. So we're just doing all the flat packs, flat pack depths, and everything that needs to be done for the package yeah, and selected. then. This will get even though it's a new blue image, so it has all the codecs on the host. It'll auto, it'll just do all the like whatever, whatever it pulls down. Um, and I added the extension manager tool because you just can't click on GNOME extension site, so it's just called extension manager. Yeah, if you go into that and click browse, and now search for something, it will install it right from here instead of the website. Oh, okay. So. I kind of end up just using the website for discover, and then after I get my, it's annoying, but after I get my gnome sections, I'm like, how happy. do I get this on the? How do I get this on the left hand side? What on the left? Oh, uh, right, right click on the dots. There you go. Dash doc settings. There you go. That's it. Oh. And then panel mode if you want it Ubuntu style. Where's panel mode? It's down, down, down. Right panel there. mode. Nope. Oh. Right there. Yeah. And I always set it to 30. 32 is the golden the golden ratio. That's eh, too me. small for me. If, for the Ubuntu style. There we go. Yeah. That's what I like. Oh. The big <laughs> Dude, and uh this one has it, I'm actually starting to like intelligent auto hide, man. I'm not gonna lie. I used I use intelligent auto hide myself on the uh yeah. on the old Ubuntu stuff, so I'm in. But these are these are just defaults, like if um I have instructions there on re resetting it, whatever. So you can always. Cool. I like it. You can always just like unload the dash to dock. Like if you want this, but you don't want the Ubuntu stuff, you can just unload the dash to dock extension. And then um, I include, so I include that. I include app indicators. I include the blur extension. And I think that's it. And then I have some just shortcuts in the readme 
for you to install some other bling ones. Like on my personal machines, I put the cube on, but that that'd so, be a bit too full on in in no, a I'm default. No, I'm not doing the cube, but I I do use yeah. uh I do use different workspaces. Like you go control, all yeah, right and, right click. Oh, yes, yes. The, now I set I set mine to uh, four static ones. Though. Yeah, I do. Those four are dynamic as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah, yeah, of I'll course. Yeah, the classic. Now. So yeah, yeah. installation's done. You progress to the next screen. Uh, in this yep. case, it says all done, and on the all all done screen, you get a uh, a bunch yep. of call to action. So you can join our Discord community, yep. go to the website, yep. install more applications through the GNOME store. I'm gonna close that's Yafti. It. Thank you, Yafti. And then that's it. Your computing, your computing is finished. So I'm on my terminal. Do you want me to do something in the terminal a second ago? Uh, no, actually, go to GNOME software first, and then I want to show something real quick. Software. Software. Uh, yes. hey, hit ignore. I have a bug for this. Oh. I, I want to shut that off. Okay. Uh, and then go and g just pick an app or whatever. Say you want to install something. This part will. It's still slow. I do everything declaratively now. Like I don't. I don't really use this app that often. It's has loaded. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it's like oh, getting the, the metadata for the anymore. first time. Or oh, I am on the Wi-Fi. Why does it have a question mark? Am I on the Wi-Fi? Oh God, I don't know. That I should be know. blue for sure. There you go. Click the drop down, not that. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Back on the. All right. Since he says that flat hub. Yeah. Click on click on that widget. All right. So by default, on Ubuntu and Fedora, there's like five options in here. It's just all awful. It says like <laughs> Snap, RPM, like all. Of, I was just like goodbye forever. So I just put that in there. So this is gonna be flat pack in the user space. Yeah, and then that's it. Like I don't care. I'm I'm done arguing on the internet. Like, Actually, that problem is solved. Um, however, you need your stuff, right? Because you want Ubuntu and you want your work thing. So what I want you to do, um, do a uname a in your terminal. Oh god, it's, oh god, it's here forever now. Okay, it's gone. Yeah. Okay, so we're in Fedora, yeah. right? whatever and dnf doesn't work or whatever so i usually don't do a lot of stuff here this is i think where a lot of people get like confused um <laughs> yeah so i actually want to do default starship that's why i want to do dog fooding because i need i need your help on this. <laughs> okay close this terminal all right now i want you to hit Control alt u you can change this to whatever you want you oh oh and it's all aubergine look at this yeah look at this thing this is called black box so distro box assemble will let me not have to do this we'll have it assembled on A disk prior, and that's one okay, of the okay okay yeah 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 it'll be instant because what i also set up now is my distro boxes are in my git repo as well and that's declarative so, so control t is gonna be the gnome terminal control alt yeah. gives me a black box no. which it will so jump me into a, just a get used to toolbox. control alt u and you are good to go no, I'm now in that. here yeah. um th this is the stuff that's gonna go away see how annoying right, it right. Is so this is a, this is like yeah. a first time thing because after it's built yeah. and launched it i'll just it'll pop in immediately yeah. but i still hate that <laughs> okay. so yeah but but luca was working on declarative config anyway because obviously it makes sense so um yeah boom a boot and here's fedora Right. Uh, now, how, what's your favorite text editor? I know. Yeah. Uh, check the version on it. Using your package manager. Oh. This is on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in my CLI, I, it's just my Ubuntu machine. And then that's it. And what I'm working towards now this is still a pad, I don't like it, is with the declarative config and Git, I'll have my list of packages, and then I'm going to have a systemd timer that just destroys my local distro box on an interval and always pulls the freshest one. Because when it's building it GitHub, it will do all the security updates, all that stuff, or whatever, and it will come down uh, through the GitHub containers. So even if you don't do it this way with Ubuntu, if you hate slow Fedora mirrors, you could just have a declarative distro box in Git that will DNF in the middle of the night when you're asleep. Yeah. But when it's delivered to you, it's via 
um, GitHub's registry. So it'll just be fast. And then the, like you, you know, okay, you okay. only have to suffer through that stuff. So I've got, so this is mounting in the home directory and everything. So it's consistent because I just ran touch test from the Ubuntu dev box. Yes. And I've got yeah. it here on the Fedora host. Um, yep. BGT lover asked, how would I layer a package if I actually need to do that? It looks like a yeah. mentioned RPM OS tree install in the package name. So if I needed to get, uh, give me like a good package. Let's say, well, what what do people layer? I don't, I haven't layered it. So I don't know what people layer, man. Uh, all those Perl dependencies for Emacs, homebrew? Emacs, Emacs. Emacs. Okay, do I have Emacs yeah, yeah. on here? No, I don't. You so do, I'm going to do, do RPM <laughs> OS tree install, install. Emacs. And this is going to make me reboot after layering, right? Yeah, yeah, but hit control C. You're not doing this. Oh, I'm not doing yeah. Not today. Yeah. Sorry, BGT lover. Yeah. Anyway, that's how you do that, and then you'll be good to go. And then if it's something you were doing constantly, you could create your own I would just add that to my blue, image. And then add it into your image at build time yeah. so you're not layering. Yeah. Layering is like a, I need it in a pinch, and then I'll, if it works the way I expect it to, put it in my exactly. image. Because there's a, you were telling me something weird about like, Layering too many things on top of your base image makes... Yeah, so that that's a problem with stock Fedora usually because they tell you to install RPM Fusion, which is third-party repo. So you know every time our builds are red, that's actually breaking on Fedora's yeah. client systems, right? So then they tell people don't layer because the repos don't sync. That's the issue. However, if you don't need that because we include it, all everything you're layering... Isn't if Fedora already? Usually, you 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 should be fine. Uh, the updates will be slower and stuff, but they're all in the background anyway. You don't care, so um, yeah. So what I did is just over time you you adjust it, and then like once, I think that's just going to be a quest for the perfect image, and then at some point over time the community will figure it out. I mean, if you look at how much better base images they are now than they were when we started. You know, I think yeah. people just figure it out over over time what what covers the most amount of people, uh, and then the people that don't cover usually. I think the bigger problem, the reason that people, I think they get bent around the axle here when the real problem to solve is to like fix the thing that gets you off the host because like you don't care, um, which is why I compromise with like having VS Code on the image, even though whatever. Sure. We can always undo it. That's why that's why everything's in Git. Like I don't you know, if we need to change our minds, I don't care. And that is nice about the immutable systems is you have nothing to lose by trying them both. Like you will never well, I won't say you will never, but if you're pinning your stuff and doing everything properly, like n it's not a permanent decision. You don't we should say that. We should say it's not a permanent decision because I think people might think that they because you can't you're not you're not used to this lifestyle, so you're you're afraid that a decision will c cost you. Got to mute the stream again real quickly. One second. Yeah, I was gonna say password prompt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, I don't, I don't know my password for. I gotta log into my yeah. one password real quickly. Let's see what people are saying. Okay. Uh, but when the image updates, don't the layers get lost? Uh, no, they don't. It keeps the whole thing. Um, that that's how the Steam Deck works. Uh, if if you if you modify the image, but um, actually, I think only the Steam Deck does that. Most of them let you keep keep stuff that you modify. Uh, so I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna have a way better experience with Yubukino White than Fedora KDE. Actually, Yubukino White are our most popular images, like by a lot. By a lot. I'm gonna I'm gonna lick people to github.com. Okay, I'm logged back in again. Yeah. So here's the packages page. And so and from you there that... you can see the exact you can see the exact downloads. We're over a hundred hey, we're over a half million polls. 
just letting you know. And so BGT Lover was saying that if I install Emacs in DistroBox, would it have access to my home system aside from the home directory? And alone says not Slash. But to be fair, even if you do have access to Slash, it's all read-only file system anyway. So there's not a lot you can modify with Emacs outside your home directory or a few other special ones. Mm. So you'd have access to Slash inside the DistroBox. You would yeah. be able to edit your host file systems. But again, not a lot of files yeah. can be edited directly there anyways. Great DistroBox feature, too. It has a dash H if you want to define a separate home directory for that distro box. So if you don't like the home transparency or you want to keep things neat per project and stuff, that's it's a great feature. That's one of the reasons I think people like DistroBox because Toolbox doesn't do that. All right, so here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to get this to interact with my DistroBox Ubuntu host thingy. That's the biggest problem, right? Right. I gotta wait for it to right. sync all my extensions. Give it, we give it a second. Yeah. And then, is there like a dark mode for this? Uh, for Bluefin. Uh, yeah. Uh, click on the top right menu. Oh, thank you. Uh, almost. What is this bar? Uh, it's probably oh, from the flat. Oh, I'll, I'll show you how to fix that. You have to. You have to turn off the native. You have to, this is like, I'm on Linux. Let me try to render this thing. If you turn on the custom rendering that like everyone will tell you they hate. Is it, not GTK or is, it is it part of the, is it inside yeah, the go, visual? Go on, yeah. yeah, preferences. Yep. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. No, there. no, you're good, you're good, you're good. Uh, somewhere in here. How do we not find, pre oh, use the, pal use the search palette thing. Yeah. Color theme? Oh, I don't know. I need to see the panel. That I don't know what to search for. Usually, like appearance or something. It will be in here somewhere. Ooh, it picked up the Ubuntu Mono nerd font, so we ship the nerd font. Yes. Well, that's that's also yeah. what I have my settings set for. I synced all the. I synced yeah. my settings in, so that's what I have for all my things. Nice. Um. I don't know where it'd be. Window. Yeah, Etsy is read write, Marco. So you you would be able to edit oh, in there. Okay. I think you I think you should be no. able to, right? Yeah, don't do that. That was rough. Dialogue style. Yeah, custom. I think. Don't do native. Okay. Oh. I don't understand why it keeps. I don't know either. No, it's not di it's not dialogue style you want. It's it's the other one. There you go. Menu of our visibility. Wait, go back. Hold on a second. It reset this one for me. Why is it doing light modern? I want. Uh... I have a just file that install my extensions, and what I do is I turn on. It turns on dark mode at night. So where, okay, what were you saying? Sorry, I, you said something and it jumped away. I don't know. It's search for native or GTK or something, something like that. We need to turn off the GTK thing and just have it do its custom. See, this is the kind of stuff we should ship in a config file or something. This just drives me insane. Yeah. So, uh, search for GTK. I mean, it might not even be in here. No. It's a, Yeah. Window Native? decorations. Yeah, yeah, that's what we want. Mm, no. Just search for a window. Oh, dude, let me just Google it. Yeah, if you want to do that real quickly, I'll keep fumbling forward. Weird that it keeps switching to light mode even though I'm not in light mode. Yeah, I've never, I definitely see that. I haven't seen that turn off. 
custom widgets Linux VX code? Oh, window.titlebar.style. Says native. There you go. So this the custom? custom is which one? Yeah. Restart. Yeah, this right. is this is what's supposed to happen. Yeah, see how it looks normal now? Oh yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You wanna okay. file this for yourself? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I, I should just open a infuriating GitHub. There are people who think that's a good idea. I am not one of those people. I finally think of a sane way for us to ship defaults for here. Yeah, uh, so what I think we could do is maybe drop a file in uh, Etsy scale or something like that. Possibly. The pr preferences are stored in several places, so it would be hard to find a good place to yeah, put it. Yeah, I, th I think we should someone. just capture capture the flaws. Yeah. And and then we'll we'll detail it out later. This was uh title bar style. I'll create the issue. I'll go and fill this out later on, so we don't have to. Say yeah, this yeah, exactly. Type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. for sure. Because we're gonna so capture these are. Oh, we'll just call these paper cuts. We'll just. Yeah. We're gonna grab a bunch of paper cuts. So, this is called dev boxes. No, dev containers. What? What is the dev pod? Dev pod. What's the underlying thing behind here? This is black box of the terminal. But what's the? That's a distro box. Distro box. Don't yeah. You want to? Is there a distro? But this is what I don't want to do. Oh. Because here's what you're going to, like, you're going to end up at, like, Owen Taylor's plugin and stuff. The problem I have with this setup is it's Linux-specific, which means will be different. So that's why I just want you to just dev container us out of the box. Now, so people who want to set this up can do that, but I want people to have a normal. For Bluefin DX, by the way, this isn't. Like policy or anything we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but the thing blue. is, is yeah, like yeah. on Windows, I use WSL, the WSL plugin. Like, there's a WSL okay. plugin, basically, that right. allows you to down here. You just, oh, sorry, down here, it gives you a connect to host, connect to current window to host, connect to code space, and then it says connect to WSL. You can't do WSL because it's not a Windows machine. But yeah, it would be yeah. great to have like a connect to distro box or something. Yeah, here. so. so Put this in your. I want you to Google this so we can everyone can see it on the stream. Um, Owen Taylor Visual Studio Code Toolbox. Digital. I think I know what did you, you say? Want. Owen Taylor. What was it? Visual Studio Toolbox. Uh, let's see. Is there you believe spinning with a window manager only? Yeah, there's a Sway one. And there's there's a few, but there's one called. We also have a base image that comes with no window manager at all. If you wanted to like build your own, that's what you would start with. That's what we have. Uh, if you go to ublue.it in in the documentation in the search, just type "make your own" and then it'll take you to the right page. So this is like what people are doing and stuff, and so he, he like they're using the remote container stain to like have it talk to itself there's like also a podman plugin um actually there's an entire discussion in our forums marco actually if you scroll through those you can see all the options that people are listing which is probably a useful under the discussions yeah better ide integration Anything that's actually can increase the font. Yeah. Hmm. 
Hmm. Use the remote containers extension. It works with DistroBox too. That seems like what I want to do is use the remote container. Yeah. Right? So yeah, it's just keep keep reading because like oh. no one's really shipped an out of the box one, and like every time you ask, you get stuff like this. It's like a bunch of different configs. So I was like, Marco, you know this better than me. Read all of these, and then you tell me which one we're going with. Is is my intention here today? <laughs> Yeah, that one, someone tweeted at me, I think, and I told them to post it here. Okay, so let me start off with what chat has because they're, they're using it, so they can help me live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'll come back to this. So let's go back over here. We're going to do yeah. uh, remote, remote containers, containers extension. Containers. Dev containers? No, they combined them and renamed them or something. See, it must be called remote development then. Yeah, yeah. This is the oh, pain I wanted you to pack. go through. Yeah. Well, I have remote tunnels, and I have. No, sorry, yeah. I have remote SSH and WSL. I should be the one filing the issue. You should. I was going to say something, but you were very yeah, pointed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To show people, we you can file issues. We appreciate them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that way you don't have to contact switch back and forth. It'll be more efficient. Yeah. You can also start editing the one that I had. We can. That's exactly list. Yeah. what I'm going to do. Where'd you put it in Bluefin? Do you, um, BGT Lever, do you have, a, I put it in Bluefin, yeah. Do you have a link or the the app ID for the dev containers you use? If not, I'll take a look at the issue that we had, the discussion that was going on. I don't see. You can use dev containers. They renamed that is what he says. Oh, dev containers. Thank you. Um, so that's good to know. Install. Do I trust it? Well, it's from Microsoft, so I'm not 100%. So attached to a running oh, no, container. No, no, no. Yeah, I know. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, attached to a container funny. may execute arbitrary code. Only attach it if I trust. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I trust it. Oh, it just knows it's running already. Sorry, I gotta log in. Oh, I can't. George, this is it. This is what you want right here. Hold on one second. Let me just make sure. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's do this. I gotta. I'm gonna. Pl you know what? Let me just plug my mouse in. I can't. I'm dying. Yeah, you know, I've been, I've been. I'm dying. Struggling. Uh oh. Please recognize my wireless mouse. Yes. All right. Uh, okay. So oh, so dude, on our Im on our images, we do include the lib wrap back D thing. So all your if you go in a flat hub and install oh, like mouse monitor roots. extension and stuff, we will, we Why will do all roots? that stuff. Yeah, I mean it is the right container. It's in the running container, it just launched as root, which is rude. Rude. X extension uh. is called Dev containers is what we want with, right? Yeah, so I wonder if there's a way you can configure what it launches into. It's just like it attaches to the running container, but it attaches as root. Yeah. Name. But, I mean, this is cool. So if I sudo su Marco, if I – hold on. Sorry. If everyone watching, I'm suffering. You're, we're going to need to install Starship real quickly. Oh wait, dude! Do adjust. Do adjust what? Oh, never mind. I don't. I don't think I have it. Oh no, you have to be on the host for adjust files. I'm back uh, do what you were doing. No, do what you were doing. Okay. I wish to be able to ship this by just default. Just bling me up. Yeah, yeah. You're you're right. You're right. We should because do this uh, this is just what you put Netsy scale basically. Yeah. Uh, let's install. Where's the install? Libix. We're just going to make this a uh, Starship what we want. 
say what you want. You yell out to audience if, what you want. Yeah, what would you? Because would we're you just gonna do, we are going to do Starship by default because it's 2023 and I don't care. Um, we do ship ZSH. Oh, nice on there, Marco. Yeah, so you can switch to it. Actually, if you type just ZSH in. No, I, I use Bash still. I'm I'm still a baby. Yeah, yeah, I, that's more for the audience, but yeah. So we could definitely ship. Yeah, I'll do fish if someone says promises they're going to use it. Well, we can always just ship <laughs> fish on the image, and someone can switch to it. I think Bash yeah, the yeah. false fine. Oh, yeah, right. lovers got it. Command palette dev containers. Go to settings for the extension. Thank you. I'm gonna do that in a minute. Uh, no, you yeah. can't put it in user local bin. No, hold on. That'll be in user local bin in the container, so you should be. Yeah, fine. I know. I should put it on the host in a more predictable place, like my home dot bin, right? What's what's the default path? Yeah, these things. Far home Marco dot local bin is what I want. So if I'm gonna install Starship, I want to put it in var home. No. All right. I get. Uh, how do I change the path? Hold on one second. Ooh, let's do this. If someone wants to add fish, add the package name fish as a pull request on the bluefin repo bender here we go and then marco will approve it and then you'll be able to see the screen and we can show builds and stuff so this except it's gonna be far home marco local bin so starship by default we could pack it in local.bin and then you can have a just command that will like enable or disable it. What happened here? So we'll that's explicitly insane. say that's a just command because that's a. Uh... Be sure the location exists. You might have dot local. You might not have a dot bin. I don't, it but it's empty. in path already, which is kind of weird. Okay. I have a B-ash. You got to shove that in your... Put this down here at the very bottom. Okay. Ah, yes. I gotta copy my config over and everything. And yeah, because we are gonna have to fix that label and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I can do yeah. all that later. But yes. let's uh, do, do do this setting for me too, because I'm gonna write that this paper cut down. Oh, uh, what do you mean? Back on the terminal real quick. What am I? Oh, you want the, the purple you want the one? Command I used. No, the per never mind. I was I was gonna adjust one of your display settings on your purple terminal. But what's up? All right. Uh, go into the settings on that one, the menu, the hamburger thing. Preferences? Preferences, yep. And then uh, find padding and set it to 20 or anything that is not the default. I think it's under terminal. Right there, padding. Change that to not zero. So one? No, do it like 10 or something like that. Yep, okay, those are pixels. Now hit X, X out. Okay, now do an LS. You're trying to fix the uh, cutoff here? No, like the padding on the edge of the window. It, it doesn't matter. Oh, I, I was going to say, I, I've been trying to set that by the default, and I don't know what, there's a decomp bug or something that. Oh, it didn't actually set it. I probably have to press enter. There it is. I just there saw it is. jump. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. That was, that was good. Um, let's see. As let's a go to command palette, dev, containers, uh, settings. Is someone gonna PR fish? I'm just, I'm just wondering because if not, I can do it. I, I, I just want to mark, mark out to show stuff what happens when we merge something and how builds work because we might as well. Uh, okay, so. All right, I 
I'll do so. It must be something you set for the remote directly. Hmm. I don't know. Doesn't appear to be a way for me to set the default user. All right, I'll figure that out later. I'm just worried that it's going to assume that everything's underneath the uh, root user. Oh, no, Far Home Marco. Okay. That's reasonable. And then if I were to... Uh, I don't have any message keys on here. Say I were to do a git clone projects, projects, U blue OS. Git clone, git, uh, oh, I wonder if I can actually do it through here. Oh, I don't have any of my extensions in here. Uh, let's see. All right, I'm adding fish. All right. Oh, I see. So after connect, you can run the SU command. It's probably in here. I take a little look again. Uh, like a post. Okay, so I have those extensions installed. Oh, beautiful. They showed up already. So in GitHub, I think I can... Mm, eh, maybe not. I thought I could use the GitHub connection here because I have I'm blocked in my github account I thought I could clone the repo without actually being on the repo but I don't think I can uh, it may be something that you can set as well in the settings JSON file but not exposed for whatever reason here this I should change so that it adds all the right extensions but that's okay for now I'll do that later Yeah, I'm sure there's something in here I could set, but I'll. Hey, wait that. a minute. What? Why don't we look in Owen's repository? Because so. wasn't his a bunch of settings for this extension? Was it? Is that what this? Is that what this was? I think so. I'm just seeing if there's anything we can glean from here or would at least give you an understanding of I know there's a lot there's a lot going on in here yeah but it's pretty much launching VS Code and doing a bunch of other stuff oh with because they're figuring out flat pack stuff yeah we don't, see we're skipping all of it See, there's like a Podman wrapper and stuff. Yeah. It's, it is very but That's remote containers right there. That is, it says remote containers right there. Yeah, it's got the remote, it's using the remote containers extension. It's just launching, I think, from within an existing running. Okay. Uh, I don't see anything about the user. Yeah. Oh, here, remote user. Huh, there's an issue. 1043. 4053. What's inside you? 
Oh, weren't you just complaining about this? What? That the property name was different? Or was that a different thing? Um, no. But I this doesn't seem to be... All right, Wild Goose Chase then. Yeah. Creating configuration for container name. I wonder if that's done here, where if I go to like this specific remote container, this has six settings in here. The command did you see to the last run after. What, what's up? Uh, did you see the last thing BGT Lover said? I didn't need to set those in a long time, but I remember I could set a command. That yeah, I think I could do this okay. here, where it's just like, like that, basically. So if I save this, if I close these things down and exit the Visual Studio code, if I were to launch it again, and then, oh, I think it remembered that I'm going into the dev container, yeah. All right, and then I should get a terminal, and yeah, it put me back into as the, who am I? root boo that's okay that's totally okay and that's worried about it um i'm sure i could figure it out later like yeah i mean thing. even if even if we had this out of the box it would still you know incremental steps <laughs> i think just switching the so it's just switching the settings for it to look right <laughs> Yeah. That was actually let's crucial. let's set your dark mode to be automatic and stuff if you want to open No, I like it. The, I, it's always dark mode for me. Oh, okay, good, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I'm totally fine with that. So Yeah, there's a cool extension that figures out based on your location, like when your sunset and sunrise time is, and mm -hmm. then it kicks it in. That's that's how, what I use like when I'm at, on my work machine. When it switches, that's when I stop working. That's for dot files. That's probably why. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll leave this be for now. Okay. But if I CD here, I'm going to slash. Oh, I am in the right directory. It just has the root user, which is gonna mess up. Like if I touch. Yeah, a you file, touch files. Yeah, touch a file. Hey is gonna be owned by root, and if I go to here, hey is owned by the map UUID basically. Oh. But if I switch user to Marco. Yeah. Because the, yeah, that's the right. thing is I got to switch. If I could switch myself as the, as the Marco user in the dev container, as my local host user name, then it does all the UID mappings properly from the dev container. From the right. not that container from the so we're class. close. We just we just yeah. need to be when you get in here. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame these things are all going to be you. Funky. You wouldn't you wouldn't special case that like in a bash snippet or something, would you? No, nah, something you should be able to do is the extension. It's kind of lame that it's okay. not letting you. But this might just be like a open a bug on here and contribute a patch where you can set the username or yeah whatever like a setting on the root on the on here that's just yeah. like use host name username when logging into this box. I, I do want to like ship these config files and stuff but i really like i'm hesitant to be like so i was looking we'll add stuff to your bash rc automatically because then that was not just... bash rc per se but i was looking here and like it seems to it seems there are several places where there's like the default files for vs code that we could probably mm -hmm. find and ship sensible defaults to the system, your user settings will override it. But like this is like the base right. JSON file. Yeah, that's file. what we want. Yeah, yeah that's so what we, we want. if we can find where to do that, then we could ship sensible defaults. And if your user profile has edited those things, that's stored and saved separately. And then they're yeah. kind of merged automatically between X, Y, and Z. I, like so that. I think that I seems like, like that. a reasonable thing to do. Um, uh, I need to so put for settings. Yep, a default config that can be overridden by user settings. I need to real quickly just put my Starship profile in a gist so I can download it. 
So we need to start. We uh, should we? No, we don't want a custom Starship config, do we? No, 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 no. I think. Do you have people... a dope one or? Well, I'll show you mine in a second. You're gonna see it. You can make. Actually, it leave mind. it default. Default is kind of beautiful. I think. Yeah, I'm totally fine with that. It's just not for me. Um. Yes. Because every change we make, we're gonna have to maintain. Ugh. Star. Tommel. Create gist. All right. Back over here. Yoink. Yeah, there we go. Much better. I prefer mm -hmm. I prefer having directory and terminal on one line, and then everything else goes above it. So if I go into oh, my okay. distro box now and press enter, oh, if I go into a Python project, projects, ublue os, git clone, git at github.com. All right. BTT lovers got more info for us. Okay, so I Googled it, and the way to do it is to put those in a dev containers.json file, which VS Code can find. I only found examples with a Docker container and therefore Docker files, so a dev containers rebuild container was required, but don't know if the JSON file works outside that environment where there's a folder with a Docker file. Damn it, I forgot how I did it. Um, have you worked with dev containers before, Marco, actually? No, no, I, use, I normally oh, okay. use WSL stuff or remote hosts SSH. Oh, okay. That's okay, it's something we don't have to figure out today. It sounds like there's a path forward, just needs a little bit of research and polish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else do we want? Uh, I'm yeah, happy with this, this way I've we've got my stuff here, so I should be able to open this folder up. Yeah, actually, do it, do it quick. You have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dope. And then also open a browser and prove my PR. Show oh, people how the PR builds open. get started. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We added fish. Oh, cool. Well, you added yeah. fish. Look at this. Oh, we literally just added fish. Yeah. Easy peasy. I mean, it's small. It's, I mean, people are going to be like blow, but I don't care. Uh, another Castroge patch. Right, yeah, it automatically makes those and stuff. Yeah, and then tell people what is happening here. Pretend. Yeah, so, okay, for those following along. Um, yeah, the, that's, show that stuff. This GitHub repo has... Uh, it runs everything through CI. So one of the nice advantages to the way that Universal Blue does things is that before the image gets onto your machine, it's at least successfully built. There might be errors in configuration in the build, but there's no missing packages. Packages aren't broken. All that stuff is completed and compiled already. That all goes through this whole build YAML. Uh, so it builds a large matrix for Bluefin. So this will build Bluefin, Bluefin DX, Bluefin Framework, and Bluefin DX for Framework uh, laptops. It'll also build... NVIDIA variants of those for 37 and 38. So every time a build is completed for Bluefin in GitHub, it's going to build a matrix of, what is this? One, two, three, four, four times two times two. Uh, 12, 16, about 14 builds actually, because we ignore some of this. About 14 yeah. image variants get built through here. So it'll build Bluefin Main 37, Bluefin Main 38, Bluefin NVIDIA 37, Bluefin NVIDIA 38, so on and so forth down the line. Um, the build process for this is terribly complex. This looks intimidating, but it's really just how do you generate labels for the Docker image or the container image. Um, the big important piece is right here where we build the image using Builda. And then we publish the image to GC, G, GitHub's container registry. What this pull request does is it makes sure that the image is buildable. So all these are going to run. So right now, a whole bunch of them have finished already. So we know that it was successful for the main image of Bluefin Framework 37, main Bluefin DX38, which is the image I'm on right now. 37, yeah, show a log. So, uh, yeah, we can look at a log, I guess. Let's do yeah, that. show one building, sh show that they can see the scrolly. Because sometimes people say they're like, I like to see the nitty gritty or whatever. So if you can just see the expander, you can see the log of what's exactly happening in that. 
spot. So, yes, this one just finished building, so we got the last kind of couple seconds here. But if you look at the build image output, you'll see it's doing exactly what you'd you expect go. from build a build. So we pass it the container file, we give it a bunch of labels, uh, some other flags, and this is building the Bluefin DX NVIDIA image for uh, 37. So it pulls all the base layers down, it runs all the stuff in the container file, and then at the end of this, it installs all the packages using DNF, or well, OS tree install, but they're like the DNF version installs. Uh, here it installs Yafti. Um, you'll see in here, we can see where it installed EMA, uh, Fish now. So if I do Control F, Fish, mm, probably better if I do it here, Fish. So it ran the RPM OS tree override remove and then it installs fish gnome extensions etc so yeah the stuff fish on gets that list. installed in here as part of the build image because we added that to the packages that we want installed um question bgt lover i never thought that i can happen with normal distros can they ship broken packages like that the only time i saw it was with grub issues in arch last year um happens all the time it happens but it happens on your local computer so like if you go to run like an an app disk upgrade or a DNF upgrade and a, and a remote package archive is broken, your local machine is now broken because you can get to that wedge state locally. Because we're building out that image here in CI, if that image gets to a wedge state and fails, it never gets uploaded to the registry and it never gets synced to your yeah. computer. Is there a red one, actually? Uh, I don't see a red one, but we can look at all uh, the builds. Yeah, or if, if, any of you, if you go to the nvidia repos or whatever those always have red in them and you'll see like the rpm fusion skew in the logs and stuff like that um so let's look at the actions for the last couple times so here here's a couple of failed builds that came in we're looking to yeah. enable driver builds in a pull request this failed you can see some of them passed some of them failed uh yeah a lot so, of them failed actually yeah this is an actual bug where a pull request will fail you want to look at an older one this is broken for an entirely uh, different reason. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Well, still. Benjamin yeah. has a fix in hand. Let's yeah, find one for here. This is a this is a merge group. So this should have been a clean build that failed. Yeah. Oh, uh, don't tell me it's the same reason. Could be. Uh no, this failed during temp installed. Uh error running transaction. So this AK mods U Blue install conflicts. Yeah with an existing add-on already in here. So something happened in here where the packages would have conflicted if it was on your local machine. Yeah. This um, was a cell phone, too. I mean, sure. we did it to ourselves on a this A bad one. config yeah. got, <laughs> got merged, but the result of that is that it didn't actually get shipped out to anywhere because the build process yeah. failed for the package installations. Now, it's yeah. not going to catch everything, but it catches bad package states. Um, yeah. What do you do like, with those which fail? When they fail, nothing. They, I mean, we review the logs and figure out why it failed. But a lot of time it'll be intermittent repository issues like an external repo is unavailable or there was a bad package that was uploaded or a latent package uploaded or a mismatch in kernel versions. We review them and if it's anything to take action on, we'll take action. But most of the time it's just wait and run again tomorrow or like wait retry. Hours yeah. Ago. Yeah. So for those This runs automatically every twenty four hours. Sorry. No, no. For those for those intermittent failures, we can just press this button to rerun a failed job if it was something like a networking pickup or another thing like early on my laptop when i was trying to rebase it was just like no screw you uh you just kept yeah. running the command over and over again same thing we could just re-trigger the job if it's one of those intermittent failures yeah um what was i doing i feel like i was up to something uh oh the bluefin show the show the merge queue and then that was it. i just wanted to show the package list to show like oh yeah the image date, and then all they have to do is do an update, and then you would have fish on your your image. Let me go back to your pull request and approve it. Because it passed. I've approved it. So we'll just say merge and ready. Yeah. So now that it's passed all the tests, so it was able to install the fish package. Uh, all that is fine. So what's going to happen now is it's going to go to the merge queue. The merge queue is successful. It'll land in the main in a few minutes, and then it'll build a new version, and I can just rebase locally. How yeah. would I go about self-hosting this if you don't trust GitHub or any of these external sites? That's a great question. There's a project that someone spun up in here for doing Forge. everything self-hosting. Forge. Forge. On-prem universal blue. So I don't know the status of this yet. I imagine there's yeah, still a work in progress I here. Had time. 
I wish I had time for this so bad. The idea is that Forge would give you the ability, if you had hardware in your local network or you had your own server somewhere, you could set up Forge to do all these things where you get the ability to run builds, container registry hosting, uh, all the stuff that we use and leverage GitHub's infrastructure for, but on your own infrastructure. So yeah. what we're doing with GitHub Actions and GitHub itself isn't very special. It's really just running build to build and then build a uh, Podman push to an endpoint. Yeah, actually, if you want, if you wanted to self-host, you could self-host on your network with a. Um, because before we set this up, I would literally just build the image. I would type Podman build period on my That's other right. local there machine. Is, uh, there, on the website, there's a little bit of information about how to. Hack yeah, locally. like yeah. Uh, and then what you do is you run the Docker registry to yourself and you serve yourself tinkerer's guide i think it's under right uh use a full text search local testing see local testing thank you nice uh so there this this guide assumes you're using a virtual machine for your testing and then on your host machine you can set up a container registry yeah uh, that would have work. it on the network and then you can that basically podman build locally podman push it to the registry and then pull from that registry uh, so those instructions are here in the you blew it site under the local testing guide to get you started. And then if you do find better ways to do this or better tooling, we're always yeah. open for contributions, suggestions. Uh, but Forge is like the more like I run several machines that I want to have my own offline private nets uh, workflow. Yeah. And then this is more for the I want to hack on an image and be able to quickly rebase over and over again without waiting for build times through GitHub or pushing it to GitHub necessarily. And for the hosting stuff, there's a lot of stuff you could use to run your own registry. You could use Harbor. You can use Key. You can use Docker's registry. You can root. What else? What other registries are there? Anyway, there's a bunch to self-host. Like, you you won't be spoiled for choice. Uh, and then Podman or – actually, I think you could even use Docker Build. Can't you? Yeah, of yeah, course you should. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this, I think this question is best for you, so I'm going to ask you, George. Alone asks, uh, could I make my system act fully as a Chromebook? Like the base system is already auto-updating, but apps installed through Flatpak aren't really. What yeah. You so, Marco, I'm going to tell you, and then you're going to spelunk so you can show them how you dig for it. It is in the Flatpak service unit in the config service unit. Oh, you're going to actually, actually show make me splunk for it, aren't you? Oh no no! I'm gonna tell you where it is, but okay. I'm also gonna show it's on your disk already. There's a flat pack service unit. Yeah, hey, there's the merge queue. System cuddle. Yep. Enable. Flat pack uh, system I would update. I would do status because I have it all on by default. So you're saying is this that's already done? No, we have. I'm showing you where the service unit is, so they can edit it, because they want to change the default. By yeah. default, I have a timer that automatically updates their flat pack. But he's asking, can I make my system act fully as a Chromebook? Like the base system is already updating, but the apps installed through flat pack aren't. Okay. So you would. Will you just enable this? It's loaded but disabled. Yeah, you would turn off the timer, right? Turn off the timer. Is it yeah. a timer? Oh, triggered by timer. Well, I, think I would just is, disable wait, the timer. It's well, more a question for you because you know system D. Yeah, but give me let me let me alone yeah. can you clarify. Are you looking to make it so that your flat packs are always updating, just like your base system is, or you want to turn off and only update when you're ready to update? He wants to turn it off. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. He says no, he wants to turn it on. I think he wants to turn it on. Oh, he says, I mean, I didn't or know I there is a service. Want to turn it on at least. Yeah, so, yeah. So this yeah, is already right. done in the you, I think this is part of the space Fedora, isn't it? Or do you do this? This is in the config. This is in the config repo. We do this. So, so we, we have... do. Okay. So we do this. So right. there is a flat pack system update timer. This timer gets triggered every, I don't know how long, but it's got 12 minutes left till it gets triggered. So every it's probably... six hours, I want to say. Okay. I set it for twice a day. Yeah. When this trigger fires, it's going to run this system D service, which we saw it triggered probably triggers on reboot and then once every six hours oh kept so, the service yeah so you can uh, see the there oh there it is right there yeah 
Yeah. So this will. So this here says starting Flatpak system update service. Nothing to do. Deactivated. When the timer runs again in a few minutes at midnight local time for me, it will trigger this again. Check for updates. So in the universal blue images, we pack this in as one of those kind of like quality of life. Changes. Quality of life. Yeah. yeah. I hope that answers your question. It's a great question though, because I know. Yeah, and all of these services actually, the way you added this would be, you wouldn't even you. You could also adjust this, is what I wanted to say, instead yes. of just turning it on and off. System cuddle edit. And then it will create your service unit and then put it in the right place as an override. So it also keeps a copy of the default, which is just so clutch. It's, it's, trying, to create, it's trying to create an Etsy system D. I'm not going to be able to do that. It needs to create it in my user space. Maybe because it's a system. I think so. I don't know. I just I've seen people user. do it. Yeah. User. What was the error again? Yeah, so okay. Oh, I can yeah, force yeah. it to create a new force full. All right. And this should put it in a dot <laughs> file, oh, right? Oh why no. Why would you do this to me, system? All right, we're not <laughs> doing that. I'm not messing with that today. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you that existed. I'm sorry. So like um the reason I wanted to say that is anytime there's a system D unit on your system, a lot of people just on old old style they will try to edit that file and then they can't and then they get mad that they can't you can always just override and it will stick it in the user thing when you're doing this is like for your development stuff yeah 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 whatever how whatever you do on your servers like generally i don't way. i don't mess i don't mess so I, I'll, yeah i don't I'll touch any of this yeah, yeah. One question though, after installing Fleek, each time I'm launching a terminal, I get an error Fleek command not found. I know I don't Brian know anything about Fleek right now. It's in the middle of a transition right now. Yeah, yeah I, I so I know Brian was trying to update some documentation. I think that's a that's a not an uncommon error. It's something with the pathing for Fleek not being found. Um I would We need to do a Fleek one. Yeah. We should do a Fleek one, it'd be good. Uh, I'm not gonna do it because we're coming close to midnight. We're about a two hour stream. Oh now. man. Yeah, we gotta, but, um, we gotta call it here. Either poke in the Discord or open it, open a GitHub issue on the Fleek repo about it. I'm sure someone can help point the direction. If it hasn't already been asked before, let me check. It may already be in here. You blue OS. Fleek. Oh, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of stuff. Yeah, we should just ask Brian to do a stream. Actually, Brian has does streams. He did it on his work. He uh, he he covered he covered DevBox actually on his AWS stream. Let me see. Oh, it's not B. Kettleson. It's like some Amazon thing. Uh, maybe it's not reported yet. You know, I if you feel up for it alone, opening an issue on Fleek, I think would be a best way to capture that. And then Brian or someone else who's more familiar with the Fleek portion can help get yeah. you some answers there. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a good answer for you. All right. Um... Let me just do this real quickly because I, I'm here. I've got Yafty. Yep. Uh, oh, you're going to do a quick bug fix. Yeah. Now the dog fooding begins. Oh, it's Marco. Okay. Back to Marco. Um, I don't know why I didn't put me in the project directory. Projects. You blue Yafty. Poetry. I don't have poetry inside my toolbox. Yoink. Oh. Interesting. Um, I'm probably going to spend less. I, some at least because of the way that this feels like the way dev containers is executing into the container is not the same way the toolbox is. So yeah. that might be troublesome. But we are well on our way. Yeah, yeah. I I feel like there's not a lot of work to get this to work naturally like this is here. Yeah, so, and once we have that, 
we'll have that fleet with Jetbox or DevBox and then DevPod, which is the other thing. That local bin. I want local bin, right? That's where everything is? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, that's where it's going to put yeah. stuff. Well, wow, perfect. I, I know. know poetry in the nice? host system as well. Excellent. I know. Now isn't I that great? Poetry. Install. It found 3.11. Okay. Why did it fail? Oh, I need... Um, I need... Python 3. We are going to solve Visual Studio in Linux. It's perfect. Dev. Is it already possible to do unattended system upgrades so that you just get prompted with a dialog box to reboot in order to apply the update? Then you're done without you having to do anything. So what I do, I think we could set it to make you a prompt. But what I do instead is I just use my computer, and then when I'm not using it, I turn it off. And the service units that we ship, our PMOS tree has like an automatic function, which is really nice because it's staging the updates over time. So like, uh, let's say you, you had a computer on for like three days or whatever. Um, when you do the reboot, like you know how normal operating systems, they get like slower the longer it's been that you haven't done a thing uh, because it's staging them every single day. It's like committing them on the reboot. It's like really fast. So what I do is like, I just leave them and then my laptops are kind of naturally power cycling all the time. Um, but you can always set timers to like auto reboot you and CoralOS has. So a lot of this stuff is common on server. So there's like, this tool called Zincati that will let you set um, maintenance windows on all the workstations. And you can set, this is cool, Marco, you can set a skew so that like if you had a lab of machines, they could all kind of stage reboots so they're not, you know, doing it all at once. And as all that kind of stuff is available to us. Uh, but right now the service units are like kind of basic and stuff. And someone had the idea, which I think we should do is, uh, Sometimes RPM OS3 checks for updates in the background, and it'd be nice if this, if the service unit was smart enough to say if a full screen OpenGL or slash Vulkan thing or whatever is running, don't do that. That way we'll never get in a, a Windows situation, which I think is pretty dope. for me when updates happen. Yeah, I think the the issue I think with that would be that you would get that window every single day. Actually, you would get that window every single day, probably at the same time every day. Right, because we're rebuilding yeah. an image every night on cron basically. So, yeah. it would tell you every time just because there's daily updates always to base packages and stuff. So that's why we're always rebuilding on cron yeah. and We'd when new features land. Yeah. So you should have fish sometime tonight. Well, yeah, and it's going to finish in about 20 seconds, 30 seconds, because, oh, it's done. Yeah. So it's going to land in the repo. So each of these, we built a comp uh, virtual builder turned through us, turned uh, through our build. So that was like... Just to show you the scale of the project, this is just Bluefin, but every time we do a pull request in 24 hours a day, we we're building all of it, all at once. So now that it's landed and merged, uh, it's doing the release. So this is the last portion of the pipeline. So all the stuff yeah. has been built. We're going to get a... What is this one? Actually, if you go to package, the packages should be there. Push to GHCRIO. All right. Push another registry, yeah. So if we go to Bluefin, well, I've seen eight minutes ago, uh, 37 and 38 was published nine minutes ago. So yeah, yeah. those are Click on latest. in now. Click on latest. Yeah. There you go. So what I can do in a second, I can probably do it now actually. I can run. Uh, 
Oh yeah, yeah. RPM OS tree was it update? Update. Yeah. Oh, actually, type this. Just update. Just update. Yep. I ship a little convenience thing for you. Watch this. So it's found so, uh, 65 already present trunk. Because I did the install today, it's only going to find that one new yeah. layer, basically. And this, the, this is the layers. issue that they're fixing. See how it's one gig because we added one package? That's the current problem. And yeah, BGC that. Lover, we yeah. just installed by default. And then we also, George cleverly, I don't know if it was George someone else, cleverly put a just file in a location, which means that uh, I'm open a new tab for this. Yeah, it's got a bunch of pre-canned, just targets out of the box that yeah, help. Like, to... dude, just change log. Check this out. That'll give you all the updates that you got in your last thing. Oh, I see. I see. Because I did keep scrolling up. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how you get like your change logs because I like those. So I use that every day. Uh, I have a command called "Don't do this one." Just BIOS, which will reboot you into the BIOS. Uh, just benchmark I added will do a one minute yeah. stress NG test. Yeah, I really like that one. This, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. oh, do just GNOME extensions will give you all the goodies. Wait, what is this doing? Installing a bunch of stuff. I no, I don't actually. I do want tail scale. Yeah, it's it's you want them all. Trust me, it's not. Oh, gonna be this a sucks. I gotta say for everything, everything. Oh, that one you want to cancel. What? Oh, hit install. No, you want panel. Click. Yes, 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 yes. Would stop. No, I'm no. not doing this. You're driving me nuts. Driving me I, nuts. I didn't do that many. I didn't do that many. That was like the last oh, one. No, no, but you need pano so bad. What does pano do? Oh, is that your clipboard That's thing? That's the search, the clipboard thing. Yeah. Uh, just go into extension manager and you click the delete button. It's it's not okay. the end of the world. Yeah, yeah. Well, fine. now I have tail scale. Cool. Uh, so we're waiting for the rebase to finish because this is fetching the newest image with fish on it. Yep. And then we'll be reboot, and then we're done. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and reboot. Let's. I'll drop out of this. Yeah, for the Nvidia stuff, the uh, you, there's a just thing for to do all the Nvidia stuff. We have all this written down. You should check the docs and the readmes and stuff. We have a full text. That's why we we put everything in a full text search on the website. Just you got to know what to look for. So I want to do a bunch more just stuff. So uh, just update will do a distro box. It'll upgrade all your distro boxes. It'll do an RPM OS tree update. Actually, show the just file if you want. Well, I will. No, this won't work. You got to reboot. I know. Yeah. I'm whoa. Oh, Give it sorry. away. Oh, <laughs> sorry. All right. So yeah. there's no fish. I'm gonna. I'm too full on. I'm too full on. <laughs> reboot. <laughs> Goof. I, right. Dude, I like how it turns red. Mine doesn't do that. That's you know. That's why I, that's why I got my own little thing. Man, now we're now we're gonna ship a distro. I don't want to do that. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> uh, catch it up. Yeah, I mean, BGC lover. I does Orca actually work on Silver Blue the base, or is it just Universal Blue the stuff that's a big bugger? I have I have no idea. But the screen's dark because I'm rebooting, so you should see it pop back up in a second. Yeah. That would be a great question to ask on the uh, on discussion forums because someone would know right away. I think. Mm -hmm. There is an right. apply live flag, but I don't really use it. Yeah, everything's I, I declarative it. already. Like I don't care. Yeah. Now I have fish. But just you see how your panel has like a nice blur on it, and your top panel too. Yeah, I like it. So that, I mean, would have been faster just to run RPM OS tree install fish. Yeah, but now fish is available in the DX image for everyone. Or is it in all of Bluefin? I think it's all Bluefin. All of Bluefin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just a shell. Eh, whatever. Sure. Now, changing shells in on these systems is different. So I will actually have to ship a just file. To change to fish because you can't just change shell the sh fish. If I press that's alt like it's meta s alt meta. Yeah. 
Can you hear it? Hold on, let me move my microphone. It, no. Oh, I just turned it off. Oh, and I should have pointed out, Marco, the tail scale thing that was installing was the extension because we do have tail scale on the image. Screen reader off. Screen reader on. Tilda frame. Marco at the door. Tilda frame. I hear it. Tilda. Yeah. Uh. Panel. High contrast check menu item not checked. Zoom check menu item not checked. Large text check I hear menu it. item not checked. Screen reader check menu item checked. So, it uh, does work, I suppose? I don't know if that we're looking for BG Glover. I gotta turn this off, though, because it's screen reader on. Yeah. screaming at me. I think it's not working for them. That is unfortunate, then, especially for an accessibility feature. Yeah. That volume is a change I made in Bluefin. This one down here? Yeah, they, Stock Gnome doesn't let you overdrive. And on I, certain I, thing pads, like, you have to have it. I liked it. I don't understand that. Cool. All right, we got fish. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Man, that looks nice. Yeah, I like that blur. Yeah, I like it all. Oh, Good. oh, actually, right, right click on this. Let me show you one last thing. Okay. And then we'll call it. Oh, the installer doesn't work. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a real bummer. You can, oh, you got to talk yeah. to Fedora about that. Yeah. Oh, so much, oh, uh, so much we can do. Yeah, right click. Right click on the desktop and go to display backgrounds or whatever. I just wanted to show everyone. Change background. Yeah. Uh, scroll down. Oh, did we remove them? Keep scrolling down. I thought we had the vanilla wallpapers in here. Right oh, here. we do. Yeah, yeah. I like vanilla's wallpapers, so we like I add those. They have a whole set in there. Like their default ones are just like so good. That's a default one, I think. Oh, that's nice. I like that. And then the cloudy ones, that's the default Fedora ones. Yep. And then of course the best one. They those scroll up. I know. That I know. top row. The very top row, yeah. I mean. These are the vanilla ones or are these that are the one, default ones? Get the no to get that middle one, right that. The middle one. No. The middle. Okay, hold on. I'm clicking, I'm clicking. Oh, I'm watching the stream. I'm sorry. I know. It's like, it's no. like I'm so I'm so infuriating, aren't I? I'm sorry. Look how good this looks. Look at this wallpaper. It's nice. I guess it looks like, different in dark and light mode, yeah. Oh, that is cool. I had noticed that. Well, of course that makes sense. Cool. So that's it. You should have to do no maintenance. Like even your Visual Studio updates will happen in CIC. Like nothing happens on your PC. Yeah, I like it. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna. F Ooh, what is that? Fiddle around. Oh, it's not running. Oh, so cool. What happens? Will that work? No, I'm not gonna start it here. I'm gonna start it here instead. Huh, okay. I'm just gonna re. I'm gonna re-exit and come back in. That's the thing I like. That's the thing. Like, if someone were to build a toolbox integration or extend dev containers to do about toolboxes explicitly, it'll improve the experience because, like, the WSL, if your WSL isn't fired up, it'll VS just do it. We'll right? just start up that can, yeah, we'll just start it up. Yeah. Um, that's something I might play around with this week. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's going to. Now it's doing the right thing. Okay. 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 Oh man, we're so close. Thank you. Thanks for putting it up with me tonight, everyone. Yeah, this is great. I just get so excited when I see Marco Unixing, man. <laughs> it this is you don't understand. We've been working on this thing for like two and a half years, and this is the first time you've installed it on, on hard metal. Yeah. On hardware. I'm like not a VM. VMs and Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. Of course you have. Yeah, but like an actual commitment laptop. Yeah, I like so, it so far. Uh it's we're finally fun. we're finally not embarrassing. That's the it's a it's milestone gotten, today. It's gotten good to get to here. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna right. I'm gonna go patch some stuff and then go to bed, and I'm gonna go mess yeah. around with this dev container stuff. I think it feels like ninety five percent there with this plug. I know. It yeah. just needs to know how to talk to toolbox, right? That's what this yeah. is. Toolbox. Distro. That's a distro box. Distro box. Yeah. But it's Podman. Is the oh, it's end. just Podman. Yeah, so Distrobox and Toolbox are just convenience wrappers for Podman. Oh, so that's how it's able to connect because it's going through the Docker socket, basically. Yeah, yeah. So I, just like, need to get to, I just need to get it to use the right... So the thing that BGT Lover was saying about using the right um, JSON file to tell yeah. the username to log And Distrobox is Bash. And, and you know Luca, so uh, voila. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you... If you were to say I can make distro box like behavior, uh, you'd have a really long Podman command with the flags for like you know IPC and all that stuff. Like if you look in distro box, like that's exactly what he does. He just templated everything and it's awesome and doing all those things. Actually, yeah, that's source. Uh, do this just distro box and it will pull the Git version for you. Okay. Which so you want? Distrobox just very clever wrapper for Podman to make it that it so that it whole experience work. Does yeah, the exactly. Right bits. Yeah, transparent mounting of the home directory, all of that stuff. Yeah, that's all distro. So when I Distrobox enter is what I really want to see. So what are you doing down here? Okay, clean. Anyway, we should call it. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. I like it. Uh, yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. All thanks, right. everyone. It's a great question. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Thanks for putting up with me. See you all the next time. Yeah. Yes, I want a GUI around this to Brox the way bottles is from wine. I agree, hundred percent. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like that. It should just be built into the terminal. Oh, you're talking about Project XO. I agree. But that's a different thing. 100% agree. Ah, look how good that blur looks, man. Woo. Love it. Yeah, no, it feels it feels familiar. I like this is the, this is what I would expect from a familiar Ubuntu desktop. Although right. You know what you got to get? You got to get the It's the official ones. Yeah, so here's actually a problem that you could help fix. I don't know how to programmatically grab all the wallpapers without doing a bizarre checkout of Ubuntu LP colon Ubuntu dash wallpapers. No, that's pretty much it. You can do it through Git now because LP's got Git access. But Yeah, so I, I don't know how to map that, but if you wanted to programmatically get us Ubuntu's wallpapers, absolutely, man. Is it Ubuntu wallpapers? Yeah, something like that. But don't do that now. File a bug for yourself tomorrow. But that's why I wanted you to dog food it. You're going to find all the little things, and there, there'll be little settings where you forgot. You're like, oh, yeah. And Ubuntu, like someone was like, hey, Ubuntu and Ubuntu tap to no, click is on by default. And this then isn't fixed updated it. anymore. This hasn't been touched yeah. in years. Yeah, we have to figure out wherever they are. I, I ended up in here and like. Oh, no, it is. I was. I was. Uh, you to find the right ones. You remember how fast Bazaar is? Yeah. Wait until you try to pull this thing. Oh, it's all the translations. Yeah, it's and they pumping the translations repos in here. Old dude, it is. I can see old. how old it is. Yeah. So there's some names I haven't seen in a long time. I know, man. Good memories in here. Okay. Well, that's fine. All right, all right, all right. I'll do that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's a different... All right. Those are the kind of things I wanted to get you on the image, so now you have to go fix them and stuff. Yeah. So. <laughs> all, all right, man. Thanks, yeah. everyone. We'll see you. Thanks, ya. everyone. Have a good night. Till next time. Did you stop?